Hey, it's Vanessa the Crafty Gemini. I post weekly videos right here on my YouTube channel and in this video I'm going to teach you how to make quilted oven mitts. So first thing we need to do is come up with our pattern. You can trace an old oven mitt you have or you can use this free pattern that I've provided for you. The link is in the description box below. Now because I tried to get it to fit onto one page, you are going to need to make an adjustment. It's real simple and all it is is you need to add two more inches here. So we need a little bit more length. I cut a strip of my cardstock here to two inches and I'm just going to stick it right there from that line down. Make sure if you're using my PDF pattern that you're printing it to size at 100% and not fit to page. Otherwise, you're gonna end up with a smaller one. So I'm taping this here, and all you're gonna do is kinda just drag that line straight down. You can eyeball it, all right? And so that is now the finished pattern with these two inches added. So go ahead and cut out your pattern. All right, so now once we have our finished pattern cut out, we need two different fabrics. You're gonna have one that's gonna be for the outside, okay? And then another one for your lining. So go ahead and select your fabrics and I'm going to cut out here my lining first just to show you and you're going to repeat this process both for the lining fabric and for the outer fabric. I have it folded here so I can cut two pieces at once and so what you want to do is you can have it folded either way. This one is with wrong sides of the fabric touching or you can do it right sides. All you want to do is make sure that you end up with two pieces that are opposites of each other. So let me show you here. I've cut out my pieces already for the outer fabric. So notice how I have the thumb going this way and the thumb going this way with the pretty sides of the fabric facing up. So you want to end up with opposites. So you can cut it like this, fold your fabric pretty sides touching and cut it out once and you'll end up with the two pieces that you need. All right. So we're going to repeat that to the outer fabric and the lining fabric. So my outer fabric is already cut. Now let me go ahead and repeat that here for my lining fabric. I'm going to lay some pattern weights on here. And I can do this freehand with a rotary cutter, but if you don't feel comfortable, go ahead and just use your scissors as well. And for tighter curves, I like to use a smaller rotary cutter instead of my big one. Where am I here? Okay. And now I have my two lining pieces, all right? So we're going to set those with pretty sides of the fabric touching, so pretty to pretty, and just set them aside for now. Since we repeated that already with our outer fabric, you're going to take the outer fabric and lay it on top of some insole bright or some other type of insulated batting that usually on the packaging it will say that it's good to use for oven mitts. Uh, it has this reflective stuff on it. I don't know if you can see that too good on camera, but it kind of has like a sheen to it. That side that's shinier, that has more of the metallic look to it, is the one that you want to put with the wrong side of the fabric, right? So this is more matte looking. That should be away from your fabric. You want to have the reflective side or the shinier, more metallic looking side to the back of your fabric because we want to have that reflective side being towards what, whatever the hot stuff is that you're grabbing so it can reflect the heat back onto the heat source. So I've cut out pieces just slightly bigger than my fabric pieces here and we're going to head over to the sewing machine and we're going to quilt this. Here is a couple samples and you can mark lines but I kind of like to go for a more freeform look like these. Just random lines in all kinds of directions. You don't have to know how to free motion quilt and you can just do random lines and I'll show you how I do that. So you can see that there's really no rhyme or reason to how I'm stitching this. You can mark out lines if you want to, but I think it's a lot more fun and more freeing to just do really random stitch lines all over the place. It doesn't matter. It doesn't have to be perfect. We just want the fabric to stick to the insole bright material. So let me just show you the back side here. After I've done, I'm done stitching both of these mitts to the insole bright, you can see that they're just really random stitch lines. I did a darker color of thread in the bobbin just so it can stand out on camera. Just feel free to just go crazy and be free with your stitching. Now we're going to cut all the way around this. You can use scissors again if you're not comfortable doing this freehand with the rotary cutter. Once you have your two pieces together, lay them with the pretty sides of the fabric touching. 
And now because the fabric is a little bit bulky, I like to use these clips and I'll include a link in the description box below on where you can get them. These really are my favorite for quilt binding or for clipping chunky layers of fabric like this project where the pins are a little bit too tight to kind of get in there and go through all these layers. So I've stitched all the way around and let me show you here because I have a darker thread color back here. On this little part, make sure that you're still leaving yourself enough space. Don't get too tight on there. You're going to need some space so that you can clip in here to kind of separate that. Otherwise, it's going to be too stiff. And so what you want to do is clip in with your scissors. Just make a few clips here as close as you can get to that stitch line without cutting into it. And you can see that that loosens up the fabric a little bit more so that when you're using it, you can move your hand better, okay? And it's gonna help the fabric drape around it easier once we flip this inside out as well. Now, if you have pinking shears, go ahead and use them to go around the curves, all right? If you don't have pinking shears, go ahead and just cut some notches into it with your, with your pair of scissors, and that will work fine as well. This is reducing some bulk and allowing that curve to expand. All right, now this part is done. We're gonna repeat the same thing to the lining, but you're gonna leave an opening in the lining. So here's what I did here. I took my two lining pieces, laid them pretty sides touching, and then I took it to my sewing machine and stitched all the way around the same way we did with the actual mitt part, except that I left about a three, three and a half inch opening on one end. So you have to leave an opening in your lining to flip the whole thing right side out, all right? So after we stitched, then we're gonna go back and do the same thing we did to the other one and make those notches and clips, whatever you're gonna do. Loosen that up a little bit. And with the pinking shears. Now we have both of our pieces. We're almost done, but we need to make one more thing and that's the loop if you want to. If you don't wanna have a loop, you can make one just like this, no problem. If you do wanna add the loop, here is what you need to do. We have a piece of fabric here, two and a half inches by five inches, and we're gonna fold it up and stitch it. I'm gonna lay the pretty side of the fabric face down and fold this up lengthwise and press that crease line there. Then you wanna open it and bring in the top and bottom edges towards that crease line as well. And once you've done that, refold it on the initial crease and press that. You can put some pins if you want to. We're gonna stitch that down and stitch it closed. And I already have a sample here that's been stitched into place. For the assembly part, you should have your lining piece, the outer, and then our loop. What we're gonna do here is reach in to the outer part and flip the whole thing right side out. So I'll reach in here and notice my lining is with the ugly side or the wrong side of the fabric facing up. You should leave it like that. You want the outer part of your mitt to be touching the right side of the lining fabric. So I'm just gonna reach into this one. It may seem a little awkward, but trust me, it works. Reach in here. and slip it right into position like this, okay? And once you do that, you'll see that the top raw edges here should match. If they don't, just kind of tug it a little bit to make them reach. We'll take our clips here and just put a couple. And now we're going to add our loop in between these layers. So here's the thumb. We want it to come out the back side here, all right? So on the side that has the big curve, that's where you want to insert it. I'm gonna fold it in half and insert it with the loop in right at this seam line here in between the lining and the outer part of the mitt. So just slip it right there, real simple. And I'll put a clip through all these layers so I know it's not gonna move on me. Put a few more clips if you need to, and then all you have to do is stitch all the way around this opening here. 
So because the opening of the mitt is a little bit tight, even if you expose the free arm on your sewing machine, you're probably still gonna have a tough time doing it. So instead, I prefer to use a technique that I'm showing you right here, where I start off on the inside and I'm stitching along the inside edge and I just roll the fabric or roll the mitt, the opening towards me as I run it through the sewing machine. So I'll show you here a little bit slower so you can see exactly how I'm rotating the cuff part to get it to stitch all the way around that opening. So once that's stitched, go here to your opening in your lining and carefully flip everything out. Now it looks a little crazy, but don't worry, it's going to work out fine. Let's bring it over here to the pressing surface and our opening here, you want to turn these raw edges in and press them and you can hand stitch it. I would just machine stitch it in place because it's going to be inside the mitt anyways. Nobody's ever going to see that, but give it a nice little press. Make sure you have all those curves out. And now what you gotta do, after you stitch that into place, right? Stitch the opening shut first, but I'm just gonna show you here how you're gonna finish it off once that's done. Then you just push the lining inside and feel in there with your fingers, fix everything up. The thumb sometimes is a little tricky. Okay, and once you have everything in place inside your mitt, you can see we don't have to add any binding or anything to the top. Our little loop is in place and you can make the loop longer if you want to as well. I just take it over here to my ironing board and give it a good press. Push it so that the lining is rolled in towards the inside and just give the whole thing a nice press. And there is your finished quilted oven mitt. So that's it. I hope you enjoyed this video tutorial and saw how easy it is to whip up these little quilted oven mitts. I hope you'll give this project a try. If you do, remember to upload pictures to my Facebook page because I love to see what you're out there making from my tutorials. Thanks again for watching. Don't forget to click the subscribe button so you won't miss out on any of my future videos. And I'll see you all next time. It works. It works.